Now here, let me summarize the relation between the root location of a transfer function and the type of response I should expect. Let's cover the whole complex plane. Let me start with simple real roots. If my root is a real root at negative a, then this root will result in a response x of t equals some amplitude e to negative a t. And that means I will have a stable response that, that starts from some initial condition and decays to zero with time. Um, the other possibility is a root at positive a. Then x of t is going to be some amplitude e to the power a t and that's a positive exponential function and that goes to infinity with time exponentially so that response is unstable now let's move to the complex or the imaginary axis if the roots are on the imaginary axis and they come in pairs so if it is b then minus b is applied so it's plus minus j b x of t is going to be some um, amplitude times sine b would be the frequency plus some phase angle because it could be sine or cosine and it's a constant amplitude sine or cosine so i would have this type of response sinusoidal response that continues forever so this response is neither stable nor unstable we call it marginally stable so this is stable this is unstable this response is marginally stable now we've covered the real and imaginary axis now let's cover the space in between if the roots are complex roots on the left half side negative a plus minus j b then x of t is going to be some amplitude times e to negative a t the real part times sine the complex or the imaginary part is the frequency bt plus some phase so that i cover the sine and cosine possibilities the amplitude of this sine wave this part is exponentially decaying so i have an envelope for the sine wave that exponentially decays if you this amplitude is the equation of this envelope is actually a e to negative a t and the multiplication of the sine and this envelope will give me a sine wave that decays to zero with time and this response is stable um, the other possibility is in the right half side when the roots are positive real roots or positive, have positive real component a plus minus j b then x of t is going to be some amplitude e to the real part a t sine the imaginary part bt plus phase now this amplitude is actually growing exponentially so i would have an envelope that grows exponentially like this and the equation of this envelope is <coughs> a e to a t and the sine wave will oscillate within 
this envelope and it will grow to infinity with time and that response is unstable so we've covered the whole thing now some in some cases you might have a double root what if I have <coughs> two roots at negative a one two I have s one two both are negative a remember that when we had in the uh, partial fractions when we had a fraction repeated a squared what we did is um, s plus b we divided that into three fractions s plus a and we took that whole squared plus b s plus a without the square and plus c s plus small b and the Laplace inverse of this part is exactly the same as this one except it's multiplied by t so I would have um, the response will always be multiplied by a t plus b the part from a is multiplied by t part from b is as is so if the response of the uh, negative real root is this <coughs> the difference in the response would be that x of t instead of having a as an amplitude it will have a plus or a t plus b as an amplitude e to negative a t now what's going to happen here this grows to infinity of time if, as time increases it increases but it's multiplied by an exponential function that decays to zero and the exponential function decays to zero much faster than this approaches zero because this is a linear relation the a a t plus b goes to infinity linearly but the exponential part goes to zero exponentially so the multiplication this approach is zero before this approach is infinity and the result will be zero so my response will be also stable this might cause the response to grow a little bit at the beginning but then the exponential function catches up and returns the response back to zero so i would still have a stable response if i have a double real root double negative real root what if we double the positive real root x of t the amplitude becomes a t plus b e to power a t so this goes to infinity this goes to infinity so the result multiplying two things that go to infinity will be going to infinity even faster so i will still have an exponential response going to infinity um, much faster than this response so this is stable and here unstable now what if we have double imaginary roots we have two more roots here we have s one two three four or let me write it um, let me split that to be clearer s one two as plus minus j b and s three four also are plus minus j b so if the first proofs are going to result in this response x of t equals sine b t plus t t 
the amplitude here was A, here it will become A T plus B. Now, the amplitude of the sine wave here is A, which is constant, so the oscillation between A and negative A. But the amplitude here is linearly growing uh, amplitude. So the envelope of the sine wave actually will be a straight line. And the equation of this straight line is here's the amplitude a t plus b and the sine wave will oscillate within now again this sine wave will grow and the system response is unstable however this will grow to infinity slower than this this grows to infinity exponentially this is linearly growing to infinity so it's going to take quite a longer time before it reaches a large value. So this one is unstable, but less unstable than this one. So the control problem with this uh, issue will be a bit easier. Now, <clears throat> what if we have a double complex root as S12 negative A plus minus JB and also 3 and 4 are negative a plus minus j b. What's going to happen is, again, instead of having a in here, we're going to have x of t equals a t plus b times the exponential part negative a t times sine b t plus t. Again, the multiplication of a term that's growing with a, with a term that goes to zero, but this decays to zero much faster than this, so I will end up with, again, the same response. It might grow up a little bit in the beginning, but then the exponential function catches up, and again, you will have an exponentially decaying response. So still stable. For double uh, imaginary or double complex roots in the right half plane, it's obvious that it's going to be even more unstable. A plus minus J B and S three and four. A plus minus J B. It's going to be the same response except that the exponent will be positive e to the power of a t sine b t plus b so if this goes to infinity multiplied by this uh, term it will go to infinity even faster and again we will have this unstable sinusoidal response that goes to infinity okay now so we have covered actually the whole thing one one thing that we did not uh, cover is this point right here at the origin when s equals zero S equals zero. Okay. Now, when S is A or negative A, A, T to negative A, T. Or, let's look at the other side, S equals A, T to the positive A, T. Now, here at the origin, a is actually zero. So e to the power of zero, a, e to the power of zero, t, e to the power of zero is actually one. So it's going to be just a. And this is 
x of t. So x of t, if the root is at the origin, the response will simply be, be a constant response at a. And that's when you have a root at the origin 0. So now here we covered almost everything. What if we repeat the root at 0? If we have S12 equal 0. So x of t instead of being a becomes a t plus b. And that leads to a response that looks like a response that grows linearly. It's unstable but slowly unstable. Goes to larger values as time goes on but in a linear fashion. So this is also unstable but uh, that's a simple issue than the exponentially unstable responses. So these are all possible responses with all possible locations of the roots on the complex plane.